I got robbed by my whole group of friends. They stole wow. all my studio equipment, wow. all the stuff in my house, et cetera, et cetera. So I felt like that point on, it was like my head automatically went to my success will be my revenge. And like mm. ever since that has lived in me and I'm like, let's see how far we can take this. Boom, boom, boom. But I felt like that, I think it was junior year of high school. That's when it was really wow. like, you know what? Like my success is going to be my revenge. I'm about to do this shit. Good job. Yeah. Impressed with your vibe. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the daily bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. I thought right. I what is up, everybody? Welcome to the Breadwinner Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and we are live here in New York City at the uh, where are we at the Beekman Hotel, fancy hotel. And man, I am super excited because I have sitting directly to my left, Mister. Roland, born hustler. <laughs> Man, we got Roland here, and uh, I'm excited. I want to set this up this way. So, the last time I came up to New York City, uh, we were coming up here. I can't even remember for what, but some event that we were up here doing, and I just put out something on Instagram. Said we were going to get a bunch of people, have a meet up, some influencers, some entrepreneurs, some artists together, just have dinner. Yep. And I'm sitting here at this dinner, and this guy's sitting next to me, and we're talking <laughs> and just like cutting it up, Classic. and cool guy. And he says, "Yeah, man, my name is Roland." And he's, we're, I'm talking about like, what are you doing these days? Like, yeah, all over the place, and just you know, things are blowing up. And we're talking about social media. We're talking about all these different things. And so we get back to the hotel room that night. Um, I get back to the hotel room last night with TJ, who you guys all know. And uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm, like, looking at Roland's Instagram, and I'm like, man, God, his voice, it sounds so familiar. It sounds so freaking familiar. And then I was like, wait a second. And I scrolled through my Spotify playlist. I've got one playlist on Spotify that I'm always just, like, dumping, like, the best songs I can find onto. Right. And I see I've got this guy's song on my Spotify playlist oh, from, like, right. from, like, six months ago. Right. And I'm like, okay. Oh. So I've been listening to the song for, like, five, six months. And this dude's sitting next to me at dinner, and I'm like, it didn't even, didn't even, See, didn't even cra- register. And so that's crazy. It's man. just the law of attraction, man. It's the law of attraction. So I am extremely glad we could do this again, and now actually record this podcast. So I'm, I'm appreciate you for being here, Absolutely. making the trek down. And uh, man, for all of those that do not know uh, who you are yet, uh, let them know kind of who you are, where you're from, and tell like just a little bit, maybe three, four, five minutes of kind of the story of where you've gotten to, uh, how you've gotten to where you're at right now. Okay, so um, originally I'm from a small town called Harwich, Massachusetts. It's in a place called Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And um, it's a really small town. Not many people have heard of it. Uh, Cape Cod's kind of known as like a vacation land, but I'm from there. Uh, My name is Roland. My government name is Tommy Roland with a D, Uh, but I took the D off for government, for off my government name for um, just entertainment purposes. It sounds like Roland, so I made it like that. And um, basically, I started music back in like, I'd say 2008. 2009 uh, when I was a freshman in high school and um, it was more of a joke to begin with it was more of just like me rapping over 50 cent instrumentals on an iPod touch and then I mean music was always so connecting with me like it helped me through so many things as a kid so it was always so connecting with me so I was like you know what let me try this as for real. So yeah. I st- I went from just rapping on my iPod touch and then eventually I started, um, you know, I got garage band. I started, you know, importing vocals and uh-huh. putting full auto tune on everything, you know, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I, fa- I phased out of that quickly. It was just more of the exploration and the beginning of my career, but it started like that and, uh, more and more, 
it just became my outlet. So like, you know, the more that went on, the more I was just like, you know, induced in the actual game of hip hop, yeah. you know, and yeah. I fell in love with the craft. I fell in love with the fact that all these people would reach out to me and um, all these people would reach out to me and tell them how my music helped them to a time or help them get through a struggle, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. at that point, I'm just like, even if I weren't to make money with this, like I'm making a difference in life. So I stuck with it and, um, you know, I've stayed consistent with it for years now and through that consistency it's just grown and grown and grown and now i have the fan base that i have today you know it's it's crazy watching it come full mm. circle like it has you know what i mean Dude, i'm so glad you just said that and said that in the way that you said it because when you just talked about the music and the fact that like if i didn't get a penny from it that the roi in these letters that you get the dms that you get the facebook messages the emails from people that were impacted like that's that's like 100% what I'm all about. Like that's what I'm all about. I did a post today on Instagram that it was a picture of a thumbnail of a video that we put out last night and it was a uh, screenshot of a message that I got uh, late last night from a dude in Cape Verde, Africa that said a quote from the video that I did which I, t I asked people, what's one thing in your life that you're pretending isn't a problem? Yeah. And he said, he, he recited that and he said, that hit me at the exact right moment. Thank you so much for sharing that video from Cape Verde, Africa. See, it's and I'm crazy. like, that's like that's that's the ROI. Um, but it's that's, literally it's literally that, and it feels yeah. really good, and it just lets you. It, it's a very good reassuring factor. It just feels right. You know what I mean? So, and and the money follows. Exactly. The money follows when that sure. when that intent is on the front end. The money always follows. Always. Uh, but that's what I like about your music because the only way, like. Music's crazy nowadays, but it's always been crazy, but it's crazy nowadays. But like some songs you hear, and no one's sending a DM saying that moved me. Agreed. It may have like physically moved them. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't like move them. Agreed. But yours, you tell stories. Like yeah, you man. tell, like you, you talk about your life, you talk about struggles, you talk about pain, you talk about relationships, you talk about stuff that like people are able to then resonate with and then it does move them transparency so, man yeah. that's like literally the like that's literally the soul of my music just being transparent yeah. or telling stories that i know people will relate to or have gone through you know just humanity connecting i feel like that's like what it is and that's the music that like that <clears throat> stands the test of time right like like something some type of trending new style of music it'll come in it'll go out some new way of doing this versus that like those will come in those will go out but being able to tell a story like that's a art like that's the art and that's that's actually why i feel like my music will never die is because this slow build up of fans that i've, I've you know accumulated over time it's like they actually like my music for being transparent for being true telling my story etc mm -hmm. etc it's not a trend rap it's just me putting myself into music i'm not yeah. moving to trends i'm not trying to be anything i'm not it's literally i that's why i agree with you and feel like it is just timeless stuff is because it's just being it's just being a human like i'm yeah. just putting humanity out you know so so let's go back to when you were talking about literally rapping you know on 50 cent instrumentals uh on your ipod on yeah. your ipod i almost yeah. said ipad ipod back then yeah um so it's it kind of sounded as though it wasn't one of those things like the first time like i touched a microphone the first time i ever like like spit my own material that Nothing. it was just like like light bulb went off. This is what I was born to do. I'm never going to do anything again. It was more just like a, you were having fun, right? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I <laughs> growing up thought, thought a lot of things. My mom told me that I could be like whatever I wanted to be. That's awesome. And I thought I was going to the NBA for sure. I thought I was yes. going to be a pro BMXer. I thought I was going to be a pro <laughs> rollerblader. I did all yes. those things well, yes. but like, I thought I was going to go pro in all those things, etc. So like, when I fell into it, I never thought it was actually going to go the distance. Like It wasn't anything. And, yo, the crazy part is I tell people I started in 2008 or 2009. I tell people following that statement every single time that I sucked until 2014, 2013. That's awesome. So, like, the first years of this, I was trash. I was like, if I had heard myself at an early stage, I'd be like, why are you trying this? Yeah, like, yeah, you need yeah. to look into cooking or something. <laughs> like, you need to look into yeah. something else. But it was just like, so... Uh, I just stayed consistent with it, but yeah. like this was not my calling per se until I heard someone say, like, you know, you saved my life, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wow, like this is purpose mm -hmm. on this earth, you know? 
Dude, I really, I really wish rollerblading was still like a major part of your life, though. Right, bro. Like, I would still that, hop like, in I mean, some, I'm, bro. I'm trying to think of like this, like new hip hop rollerblading. Like, oh man, <laughs> rap.com, bro. <laughs> rollerblading <laughs> rapper. I'm about it, bro. Really, I they mean, K me two or like Solomon, like send me some blades, bro, and you got your man. I, I can't believe I just said they see me rolling, but it's the R W. Hey, no, everyone, everyone pokes fun at that. It's all good. I don't even take it. I, it sounds like rolling. So. Yeah, yeah, right. So let's talk about that moment when it did kind of click, though. That moment that things had started progressing, you started having some momentum, and then you started having that feeling, just your gut instinct of like, huh, I, I think I can actually do something with that. Like, when was that? Um, my gut moment of like, when I can do something, I would probably... Like, this could be real. Probably this could be real. Um, I would probably say... So I, this is I, I don't usually dive into this that often publicly, but so when I was young, um, I was changing schools a lot in high school, and okay. um, I don't want to get too in depth into like the situation. Sure. But basically, I changed schools. I had a brand new group of friends, <clears throat> and I started taking music serious with them. We were actually a group. Okay. We did a bunch of stuff together. Um, so, like without saying names or doing <laughs> any type of thing. I got robbed by my whole group of friends. They stole wow. all my studio equipment, wow. all the stuff in my house, et cetera, et cetera. So I felt like that point on, it was like my head automatically went to my success will be my revenge. And like mm. ever since, that has lived in me. And I'm like, let's see how far we can take this. Boom, boom, boom. But I felt like that, I think it was junior year of high school. That's when it was really wow. like, you know what? Like my success is going to be my revenge. I'm about to do this shit, you mm -hmm. know? So I felt like that was a huge piece in like when it actually ticked, when I'm like, I can... You know, like, yeah. I need to do this. I won't stop until I do this, you know? Sometimes the best, the best motivator is that chip on your shoulder. 100%. Like, I, I'll take every chip on my shoulder I can possibly get. Eat the whole bag of chips, bro. Me. Yeah, the, the whole bag. Like, Andy, <laughs> for, like Andy, 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 Andy Frisella always talks about, oh. like, how people, they disassociate, like, anger. Yeah. Like, being able to use, be used for, for motivation. Yes. Like he talks about it all the time about like the the points in his life where he was just flat angry 100 and he used that anger and he used that just that that emotion to be able to fuel him and what he wanted to do if, um, if you can take those highs those angers those lows if you can take those and put them into the right momentum the possibilities are endless you can go so far you yeah. know like so i really feel like me being able to channel my anger and put it into motivation and inspiration to get to the next level of what i want to do i feel like that helped me drastically in my career you Who were your favorite artists growing up? Growing up, I mean, my life, you asked also, like, was music a big part of my life? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was literally, everything. like, everything for my yeah. life. Like, Eminem was the reason that, as a dark ass kid, I didn't off myself, you know? Like, yeah, sure. like, I was a really dark kid and, like, yeah, going yeah. through stuff. So, music was what saved my life in those times. So, just in that essence, like, 100%. Music was literally like yeah. everything for my childhood. That's you awesome. know, so. What, what, other, uh, what other artists back in the day? Um, so I grew up on pretty much just Eminem like, really? for a lot of my childhood. Really? Then yeah, I got yeah. into like the East Coast stuff because I'm from out in the East Coast. Yes. Uh, I listened to a lot of DMX, yeah. a lot of Jada Kiss, a lot of Biggie, and I later got into like Tupac. And then my freshman year of high school, when I really started getting into music, I heard the early Drake and I heard yeah. J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, mm. and that's when my head exploded. I was like, got these it. dudes are really sparking the next level of me. These yeah. dudes are really sparking the music that I want to create, you know? And Kendrick's telling stories. Kendrick is telling like stories. Crazy. I was so, J. Cole, I would say, is my yeah. biggest influence because yeah. I listen to his early mixtapes like The Warm Up, you know, The Come Up. Up, you know mm -hmm. the below like that that stuff right there was literally so crucial to my career and like what my sound is now i grew up on that stuff heavy. that's awesome so let's talk about social media a little bit yeah like when when did when did you jump into social media and kind of what did that look like early stages was it myspace uh like, myspace like originally no, bare, a little bit on myspace yeah like not, tail end yeah it was very tail end on that. so so what did social media look like for you as you were coming up and you were trying to perfect your craft and and really get exposure get your music out there and then how did that evolve over time and how basically how has social media played a role in this evolution over the last few years um social media so i think 
first I'll tackle how I think it played a role. I think yep. that's why I've been able to excel in this mm -hmm. is because I understand social media. I understand how it works. I understand trends. I understand where it's going, where it's been, yep. et cetera, et cetera. So I think just being on top of social media and learning how you can use it to your advantage and how you can use it to a disadvantage, mm -hmm. I think that was how I made it to the point where I am today. Yeah. And it also helped me understanding, uh, helped me understand the value of connecting with people, networking, that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, that's literally everything in my career. It's yeah. just who you connect with, who you network with, who you build relationships with. Yeah. So I think that part was, you know, was everything for why I'm at where I'm at now as to my peers who maybe aren't where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And, um, my early career looked like I posted a couple songs on MySpace, but it was kind of on the phase out by the okay. time I yeah. was like really going at it. So, um, I would say like the biggest thing would probably be SoundCloud for me that okay. played a big role and YouTube played a big role. Um, I would say those things right there were, you know, pretty, pretty crucial to like where I'm at now. So yeah. I just grew with like as social media changed, you know, as MySpace phased out, we just yeah. learned, you know, capitalize on this. Don't put too much emphasis on this because we never know when that's going to go. You know, don't put too much in Snapchat because we don't know when that's going to fall out. Yeah. Instagram, same thing. So I think just riding the waves of what we see as the now yeah. is very important. What was one of those early moments with social media whether it be SoundCloud, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, when you posted a song or posted a video and it just went in that time, at that time for you in that stage nuts and you were like, oh, okay, got it. Like that's, that's what this thing can do. So quick little story on that. I had a, a friend who owned a memes account on Instagram, mm -hmm. stupid amount of followers. I think <laughs> uh, probably a million or so yeah. or maybe like, maybe... High, maybe, uh, maybe high five hundreds yeah. to a million, somewhere in there. And he owned a memes account, and I dropped a song called Nike's on My Feet. It's one of my first big ones, and we shot a very high quality video. Um, shout to Mobius Media; those are the people who put the built the video. Matt from that company, and uh, once we did that, it was just like, once we did that and started pushing it through the memes account out of here and that's when I realized the yeah. power of it I used to pay 20 bucks each shout out and I would have him shout me out like 10 times a day <laughs> I had all the but I understood what I had to put my money towards at yeah. that point no matter what I had money towards that came first because I realized this might not be forever so let's capitalize on this he would give me an hour shout hour shout hour shout and I would just that's push awesome. push push and I broke a hundred thousand with that one so it was like that wow. was my first like realization of yeah. what this social media can do and how we have to capitalize on it as much as it's we can. So, it's so interesting because that's, that just, that was just, that just came natural. Like yeah. your ability to see that and, and acknowledge that, be aware of what you could do with it. It wasn't something that you learned in school. That wasn't something that like somebody taught you. That wasn't something that like you, you like took a social media 101 course. It was just like you just sensed that like okay, this this I can do and this can scale what we've been freaking trying to do the hard way. 100%. <laughs> and I feel like that's just like knowing people's attention, knowing humans in general. Yeah. I feel like that's the part that so Excuse me. I've been in sales since I was 15, uh, working at Best Buy. So okay. like, and before that, bunch of illegal marijuana sales. Yeah, yeah. You know. So yep. I've been in sales since I was like 13, one yeah. way or the other. Sure. And I just understand it, like how humans work together. And yeah. I feel like that that uh, you know me being able to understand that and understand how humans work and why relationships build was so that's that's why I was able to you know do everything I did with social media and understand the relationships and stuff. Like Absolutely. That. Sales helped me like crazy, for the record. Like, being it's, in sales was ridiculously... It's such an interesting dynamic because, like, that's not a normal background for, for, a, for any artist Agreed. to have that. But, like, that's what, that, that's what it was. Like, when I just said that, like, that natural, like, like it just happened. Like, that's, that's what it was. It's because you were a salesman. Exactly. <laughs> like, like you were a salesman. You had a product. Exactly. And you were trying to figure out how to get that product in front of the most people. And you realize, oh, crap, this guy will do it. And it cost me this much. Or I can go out and hustle all over the streets and try to email this to everybody and, right. and mail it at that time literally like you're mailing stuff to people like and and 
oh crap, this guy can shout me out for an hour for this much, right. and it'll be seen by this many people, and thirty of those people are going to share it, and it's going to be seen by this many people. It's just that's a that's that's a pure salesman and I, mentality. I think you know what's crazy is a majority of my fan base came from one on one interaction face to face. When I was working, I worked at I've worked everywhere. I worked Best Buy, Apple, T Mobile, Verizon. I just worked everywhere electronically yeah. where I'm doing face to face. When I was at T Mobile and Verizon. Every single customer that I dealt with, actually even back back at Apple, every single customer that I got to build rapport with and talk enough to to trust, <laughs> left with either following me on Instagram or <laughs> left awesome. with my business card and the website to go to. I don't care if you're 90, you probably have a grandson. <laughs> I used yeah. to be like, well, tell your grandson, check this out, <laughs> literally face to face. And now when I do shows in LA, those are all T-Mobile customers of mine, all Verizon customers of mine because that's when I was working my day job yeah. out there. So that's it was. Awesome. It really helped me build yeah, yeah. what I have today. You know, that's awesome. So, what's the focus right now? Like, what, like, what is your main objective uh, every week right now? What are you What are you working towards? Um, I would say, you know, the same old building that I was working on, but yeah. nowadays I'm just focused on like this year. I'm just focused on upping the upping the quality of my brand, bringing my brand to a new level of. Um, of quality and things like that, you know? So I feel like that, I feel like that's what's doing it. When I look at your Instagram page, yeah, like brand is like one of the first words that comes to mind. Yeah. Because it's so congruent. Like. That's a great I, word. I like that adjective. Yeah, like that. it's so, it's that. so, um, even the colors, like Thank even the you, colors bro. pop. Yes. And it's one of those things where, um, I'm trying to think of any other artists that when I go to their pages and, I, and I'm looking at, at all the different posts that it's always around the music. Like it'll be a, a thumbnail of like a little, like an album cover thumbnail with, with part of the song. And like yes. I can't tell you how many times like I've been sitting in my car, I've been sitting at the house where I, I've clicked on one of them. And I'm sitting here swiping through so I can hear the rest of the song. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, right. I can go to Spotify. I can go to iTunes. I can go to, like, like right. why am I sitting here, like, I'm sitting here literally in my head, like, waiting for that swipe. Because I was like, wait, did it just start over? Do I, do I, do I swipe yet? Right. Do I need to swipe yet? Is it, uh, is, it, is it ready for the next minute? But, like, nobody, I don't, I don't know anybody else is doing it. But you're doing it super consistently. And it's just fully, like, that, at work and growing. Like, the, your whole page just has this theme. And it, that's, like, that's how you build a brand. Right? Exactly. Like that's, that's how you build a brand. And I think you're doing it better than anybody right now. And I wish I could express how much that means to me because this year, 2018, 2017 was good, but 2018, I'm working to be great with the yeah. brand, with branding myself, with making yeah. everything look professional. That's literally the focus of this year. So the fact that you said that it looks all congruent and it's something that you actually noticed the aesthetic yeah. of, that's everything. That's you awesome. Know? And, I'm a, and I'm a graphic worker, so like yeah. that feels really good. So you create hear. that stuff? Yeah. Wow, yeah. I did not realize that. That's even better. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. You made the albums as well? Yeah. Dude. That's awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, I'm trying to even think back, like, before I listened to the music, before I knew I was listening to the music of yeah. yours, because I was listening to it before I knew it was yours, I can remember seeing, like, some some Gary Vaynerchuk, like, some Daily V videos, like, some yeah. Instagram stories, and I'd see, like... D Rock, or I'd see like Babin, yes. or like Andy, like I'd see like people rocking a rolling hoodie yeah. or like a rolling hat, and I remember thinking like, what is like, what's this brand? Like, what is this brand? Like, what what's this company? What's this like? What kind of product right. do they sell? And like, I was so intrigued by that kind of stuff. Like, was there a lot of people that you did that type of stuff with? Like, hey, check out like, check out this uh, hoodie. Like, rock this swag. Like, just people that you had vibed with, people that you had built relationships connected with. Yeah, did you do that with a lot of people? Um, I would say a lot, a ton of people. Actually, yeah. fun fact, I don't know if, if it's kind of a diss to myself or how I should take this, but <laughs> I've actually given away probably three times the amount of hoodies than I've sold. Dude, that's so I came out of pocket, I, I came out of pocket like a ton and bought a bunch of high quality hoodies, yeah. all embroidered. I didn't yeah. do any screen printing, all embroidered, everything. Yeah. Came out of pocket like, you know what, let's do this thing to the next level. And then I've literally been giving them away every post. I've sent out so so many. Well, actually, my homie Wolf, so who handles the branding, uh, handles the shipping. So uh, shout to Wolf for that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, we've given away like stupid amounts because I think that this design itself mm -hmm. is something that people are going to look at and be like, 
what yeah. is that? It, you know, it's exactly and what it is. that's what that's literally what yeah. the goal is. You know, that's so smart. Like we're we're in the process right now. I've got a book uh, that we're in the final stages of of getting done with editing, and our entire concept with this book is is to sell it at cost, like. At cost, we're going to give away tons of them. Yes, but anywhere that they'll be able to buy it, it's at cost. Like we're thinking, it's probably going to be like three or four bucks to get the book because the goal of the book is not to make money. The goal of the book is to get the message out and then to have those people connect with Bring you on another value. level. Yeah, yes, absolutely. and that's that's everything we do. Like with my social media, I don't monetize anything. Like I don't monetize a single thing on social media whatsoever. I've never sold a single thing and made a commitment not to for five years. And it's so funny, like you made a commitment not to for five years. For five years, oh, and I'm a bro. year, and I'm, uh, I'm like 15 months right. in. Right, 15 months in. It was like one o'clock in the morning, and I just threw out this arbitrary five year number. And I woke up the next day, and I was like, Did I say five years, or was it was it four? Damn. Was it maybe, was it maybe three, or possibly two? But it stuck to the five, and for me, it was a way to just turn that switch. Yes. To where I didn't think about it anymore. Because like oh. I said it and forget it. And the funny thing is, you know, I, mean, I know you, I know you love Gary like me. So I was, I was with Gary Vaynerchuk um, down in Miami uh, a couple months ago, and I was explaining that to him. Five years, not monetizing anything, just to make that switch. And you know how he, he does. Like, you, you, you say one sentence, and he knows the whole story. Right. And he's like, bro, he's like, don't you understand? Five years will become your life. Because that's how you win. Right. Like, just by providing value, providing value, providing value, and never having to ask... Because they're going to ask. Like, they're going to end up asking because they're like, this person, like, like with Gary, like, I'm not a huge fan, and I'll go ahead and say this, I'm not a huge fan of Gary's shoes. But I feel so guilty that I don't have a pair. Like, literal guilt I have in my heart that I don't have a pair of Gary V's stupid shoes. Because of how much value how much he has value provided. Like, one. like, I literally, like, every, every time I think about it, I'm like, God, I need to get it. I got to find a pair like on StockX or like somewhere. Like, Some- I, I got to find a pair somewhere just to have, because I feel bad. Like he's got this event coming up, VoiceCon, and I literally have something that I cannot be there. But I feel like I should buy a ticket anyways just to support, like just to support the cause. Like just because he has done that, so much. It's here. Yeah, oh, okay. it's here in New York. Uh, we went to their first event. You know that, where, when it is? Um, it's next month. It's May. I've got to make sure I'm here for that. Yeah, it's May or June. Yeah, voice call. I like showing yeah. face at any Gary yeah. event. Yeah, and it's know. all about voice. The whole thing's about voice, so that could be interesting. going to make me hop on my podcast shit. Yeah, yeah, He's, that, yeah for sure. Exactly. <laughs> for sure. Um, so let's talk about that North Star, that, that, uh, that buying the New York Jets. Um, what is that for you? Do you know what it is yet? The what? That like North the, Star, like the like, end goal? Yeah, like you um, know Gary, like the the buying the New York Jets. Like what's your what's your like you um, know 30, 40 my years North from now? Star. Like fuck, I yeah. really like that question, and I actually haven't thought about that. But let me let me wing it off the yeah. head. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily the end North Star, but I mean right now, I mean probably just to buy like a really nice house okay. really uh all renewable energy of course yeah. like all all energy happy I, yes, i'm that type yes. of weird hippie motherfucker but um Vegan, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. um so i want to maybe do a house like that have i want to start i want to start a barn this is weird i know a barn a barn where we okay. save like we sanction like industry animals so I want to do that as the end goal, like a nonprofit type of thing, okay. but like a huge company. Yeah. And start. Uh, I haven't actually like really expressed this, but I also I want to do like a, a fashion line of my own, mm-hmm. where it's like like high fashion, but it doesn't use any type of product that has to do like it's all, uh, it's all green stuff. You yeah. know, no yeah, yeah, animal yeah. use, nothing. Yeah. All good like quality product that's gonna last. So I would say maybe that, maybe that, but I mean. 20 30 grammys yeah. probably you know that's i guess that's my north star it's yeah. kind of a lot but yeah, yeah i'd say that dude that's so interesting that you just said i want to start a barn that may be the most interesting answer i've ever heard but... i have a pet pig did you know that i spent no, so i spent awesome. all day today with her that's my pet awesome. pig she please lives I, my, I just all i, wanted, all I want to know is the pig's name like that's the all I my baby's know. layla layla <laughs> her name's layla my baby yes. layla yeah, uh, they all get big, actually. Yeah. So everyone watching this, ba ba ba. There's no such thing as a mini pig. Do not they buy it if you think that it's a mini pig. Uh, look at me closing my hand because my headphones are fucking in here. Um, do not buy a mini pig. Um, they're not actually mini, but yes, this bitch is huge. She's like a hundred pounds, like this, and a stubborn little little pig-headed mother. Oh, 
a stubborn little pig-headed one. <laughs> Very pig-headed. No pun intended. Unbelievable. Yeah, so... So, like, one of the things that I feel like I'm gifted at are these, like, random... This random ability to come up with, like, puns. Okay, let's hear that's this. Why, that's, why you're talking really, about, that's why you're talking about bread, like, see, bread winner pun. <laughs> I know what it is, bro. I know what it is. I heard you drop them bars, bro. I'm like, the exactly. daily bread. I'm exactly. like, damn, bro, I shouldn't even rap anymore. This <laughs> yeah, should just right. take my job. We're about to create a, a, a remix tomorrow. Wait, can sure. I stop one thing? Yes. Brody, hey, bro, would you do me one favor? Yeah. Would you hold these in your hand in your pocket? What? Hold these headphones yeah, yeah. in your hand yeah, yeah, in your yeah. pocket. You gotta keep them. They're getting hot. You gotta no. You gotta keep them that way because it will start echoing. So yeah. you gotta keep them like that and just clinch them and put it in your pocket. Oh they gotta be on skin. I've, I've actually got some playing also wrapping in. But I don't know if it's gonna no, stay no, warm. They gotta stay warm. Oh, they gotta stay warm. skin tight. Is that what it is? It's warm. Yeah. All right, so uh, just so you guys know on the podcast what's happening right now, the AirPods, the Apple AirPods, I just realized that they got to stay warm. They got to stay warm. They got to be on skin, or they have to think that they're on skin. Those are the best invention Apple's had since the iPhone. Honestly, I love them, and I didn't even see them as AirPods until um, I thought they were always Gary Vee thing. I was like, no one buys those. Yeah, it was the first time I ever saw them. And now every time people rock them, I'm like, they follow Gary Vee. Yeah. Only reason they have them. They follow Gary Vee. Everybody. got to get some of those green ones. Right. Right. So the so, puns. Sorry, so the puns. I mean, I feel like if you're gonna start a barn, like I what, feel what so it, much more natural right now. Like in yeah. the hands, I'm <laughs> not clenched. I'm, I can, I can really go into it. This is amazing. So, so if you're starting a barn, yeah. What if you call this barn? Uh oh. Rolling in the hay. Rolling in. Dude. I mean, that's like it's rolling in the hay. I mean, it's. I mean, I would be down to roll in the hay, but <laughs> um. I mean, I'll think about it. If you're if you're throwing a if you're hey, throwing a suggestion, I'll think about it. No, it's yours. It's yours. No, okay. It's yours. Um, I'm just saying. I just. I mean, I think we should. Puns, so. I think we should come up with something. Yeah. Ro, uh, ro, ro barn. Pig life. Ro, oh, <laughs> I'm about that. But pig life. Yum. Pig life. <laughs> I'm about that. I mean, my whole life I've wanted to say life like that. <laughs> I think or you it's get perfect. the tattoo across the stomach. I would 100 percent get that. I would 100. <laughs> you can make your belly button like the uh, nose of the pig. I'm about that, bro. Weird. All about I it. Love it. So, man, talk to me a little bit more about this marketing side of you because, like, this is primarily the people that are listening to this podcast are entrepreneurs, maybe some social media influencers, people that are trying to level up yeah. in life, but also in business. Okay. So, what's another thing that you've learned along the way? that has helped you get more attention like the hoodies was a freaking incredible move um and i think that's probably one of the smartest things you've ever done thank you everything you're doing on social media is incredible what are some other things uh that you look back on you're like man that was a smart move that was a smart move um i can't take full credit because it was definitely something that um like i took information i took i took from other people but that's i mean that's everything sure um I would say something I would look on early is I, this wasn't even on purpose. Me back in the day when I started this music shit, I literally from the jump was just myself. I never yeah. tried to be in with trends. I never tried yeah. to fit in with like any type of music. I was this chubby little fat kid trying to rap. And even back then, my mental was still deep. It was still me. It was still my beliefs. So I think something I look back on is just like I stayed myself like that's something I pride yeah. myself on and that's something that um, has been extremely beneficial to my fan base and following you know so Absolutely. I think I think that's crucial and um, one other thing that's been like pretty crazy is just like showing showing the people who I am being myself yep. doing stuff like vlogs mm-hmm. I have so many fans that like me just because they like my personality I never listened to MGK Machine Gun Kelly for his music I was mm-hmm. like who the fuck is this yeah, dude? Right? then I watched one of his vlogs and yep. saw what a genuine person he was and yep. I'm like I'm a fan like yeah. I really like his energy I like who this guy is you know so I'd it's, say that's huge it's so interesting like as we're talking I'm just I'm, I'm connecting like so many parallels between not necessarily just hip hop in general, like music in general, the music industry and 
just the the nature of social media right now. Yeah. Like what you just said, like you've been talking about things like transparency, being authentic, showing people like the real. And like what you just t- said was like the fact that people want to connect with people. Agreed. And that doesn't ma- that doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur. That doesn't matter if you're a business owner. That doesn't matter if if you're a hip hop artist. That doesn't matter if you're a freaking dude that has a meme site. Like every now and then they want to see the dude behind the meme site. Agreed. Right? Um, who are some of the people that you follow, like you get inspiration from? Um, I would say greatly Gary Vee. Yeah, He's yeah, always yeah. putting putting out real yeah. content. Um, I would say other uh, – I don't do much online following. I don't, like, yeah. do much stuff like that. I mean, I watch how other artists are moving Isn't and stuff like that. Isn't it interesting how the more content you're putting out and the more focused you are on yeah. creating, the less you consume? I like, swear, I swear. Like, I used like, to even cons- with Gary, like as, as as much as I love Gary, like there's sometimes where I'm just like, crap, I didn't I didn't watch the Daily V in like three months. I haven't watched it, and so I have yeah, to like go and kind of get caught up and see what's yeah. going on. But like, it's always when you're in that like grind mode where you're putting out stuff because like people like people see all the stuff I'm doing on social media, right. and all the stuff you're doing on social media. Like this dude's on social media all the time. It's like no, wrong. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not on social media like right. just wasting time and scrolling. Like I'm creating stuff and that's putting it li- out there, and that's literally so what it's about. So I, that's that's all it's been for yeah. me. It's literally like I don't consume much. I listen to a, a, like Gary Vee when I need to get inspired. But yeah. outside of that, it's me answering DMs. Mm. Interaction takes up like. 50% oh, yeah. of my day minimum yeah. Yeah. and like I'm always answering DMs constantly yeah. and if I'm not awesome. answering DMs I'm sending stuff I- I'm sent I'm meeting up with people like I do a lot of meetups in New York I just yeah. meet up with either fans business people just to hear people out it's just me putting in the groundwork me getting all this this getting my hands dirty basically because I understand one day it's going to pay off that I met up with these people that I took the time and connected you know yeah. it's all about the actual face to face energy sharing and connection so Absolutely. I think so much my time is spent on the actual interaction of everything it's everything so speaking of meetups yeah so we'll make a little announcement here since we are on instagram live those are listening to the podcast this will be long gone so tomorrow sunday yeah. we are in new york we're gonna do something interesting yeah, um, we are. we're gonna get together at uh union square union square is fuck 12 o'clock noon yep and we're gonna have a little live performance by Roland. Yep. And we've talked about Gary Vee a bunch on this podcast. It's hard to do a podcast and talk about marketing and social media and not, but... Agreed. We're going to give away hundreds, literally hundreds, of the Ask Gary V book. In my opinion, it's the number one marketing book, like tactical, stra- like strategic marketing book there is artists yeah. including anyway. that changed my game yeah. for any artist watching this like that literally changed my whole branding how i looked at things so yes an amazing book so we're bringing free out, 99 we're bringing out <laughs> free 99 we're bringing out free hundred <laughs> we're bringing out 300 free books. hundred <laughs> we're bringing out 300 books like it's like 15 boxes of books to union square we're going to give away 300 ask gary v books at 12 o'clock p.m eastern here in uh, New York City at Union Square, and this guy's going to be performing. We're going to create a freaking scene out there. We're going to rip it's gonna it up. And it's going to be 100% all about like everything that we've talked about on this podcast. It's providing value. It's connecting with individuals. It's building relationships, and it's doing it because it's just the right thing to do. Literally. Like, like you, you, you have a million things you can do tomorrow at yeah. noon. I've yeah. got a million things I can do tomorrow at noon. I've got a million things I could do with those books or with the money that those books, like, but we're just going to give it away just because like, who knows what's going to happen. One person's going to take that book. They're going to read it. They're going to start an Instagram page. They're going to start a Facebook page. They're going to create a business and it's going to change their life. Yes. From this book that like literally a stranger went up to him and was like, yo, you want a free book? And threw it at him. Right. Like it changed their life. Imagine that. Completely. Imagine that. It's crazy. So, man, tell everybody um, where they can find you online. Yeah, I mean, it's at Roland. So you guys should all follow me. Anyone who watches this, follow me at Roland on here. But um, Roland Music on everything else, essentially. So uh, follow me on there. Add me on Spotify. Get that Born Hustler or any of my other music Mm -hmm. in your loop. And, you know, get hustling. It's really hustler music. Uh, People, entrepreneurial music. So just, you know, get motivated and get it done. That's it. Guys, just to clarify, because... 
God forbid there be another like R O L A N D somewhere getting mad low, but it's R O W L A N, so it's at R O W L A N. Please go check this guy out. Like I, one thing I'll say before we close, because I was going to say this earlier, but I think it's important to say like your voice is incredible. Like it's it's so unique. Like it's it's, it's like it's hard to find a unique voice out there. And I was thinking this earlier, like coming up being so all about Eminem and like everything he was doing and that being a big part I would think and this may sound weird but I would think it'd be hard not to kind of come out sounding a little bit like Eminem yeah like, does that sound weird like, like no, no like, I understand. there's so many people that sound kind of like Eminem yeah I agree with that. There's so many white rappers that kind of sound right. like Eminem. I agree. Dude, your voice is so unique. And that's why that night when I was listening, I was like, I know this. And I was able to that's connect it. Dope. Like I was I able to that. connect that's it. That's tight as hell. Like I was able to connect oh. it to a song on my Spotify list that was like 12 scrolls up. And I was like, boom. And when I made that connection, it's on the vlog. Like it's on our daily bread vlog that we do. Like when I made that connection, I was like, what? I'm like, it's that that's unbelievable. Crazy. And that's so. honestly ridiculous. I love hearing that you think <laughs> right? I have a unique voice. That's really dope because I never really thought anything of my voice different right. um, until actually kind of recently. The homie Luigi, he calls me yeah. God voice. Yeah. I was, he, I was he, about he, to like, say that. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. calls me God voice because he like loves my voice. But I never realized that I had any type of thing until how many people started commenting on my tone or what I sound like. And I'm just like, wow, that's fucking crazy that like – I, it's fucking crazy that that people think I have a tone or a cool yeah. voice. So that's fucking amazing, and I feel like that's one of the big reasons people connect to Drake is because yeah. his voice is so fucking, yeah. you know, piercing. It's so, like melodical. Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, ears, I can literally hear it in under three seconds. Be like, that's rolling, and, it, and it's, it's, see that yeah. is fucking beyond dope. It's extremely exciting that I have a cool tone and the, that people. Will... And I'll close with this, man. Like, yeah. law of attraction. It's everything. Like, it for me, it's everything. Everything. And the, 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 like, the ability to attract the things you want by the things you put out. So let's let's follow this map real quick. So, I put a random Instagram story out doing yeah. a meet up for a dinner. A dude as off the wall of an Instagram handle as the Zen Wizard. Yes. Like, like, just happens to see it. Hits me up. Hey, we're coming. Hey, is it cool if a friend of mine rolling cons? I'm like, sure. Bro, I I'm s- like, of course. So you come to the dinner. I go back to the hotel room. Yeah. I realize who you are. Yeah. So let's just think about the things that are playing out from that. Okay, so now we're doing a podcast. Now who's going to see this? And this, then it's going to be lead to that connection, to that connection, to that connection. You just mentioned Luigi. So we were looking for a second videographer. It, Luigi, uh, you commented something, or Luigi commented something, and you you like had his back, like yo, like he's got he's yeah, got yeah, he's yeah. got great, like he's got mad skills, like like checking stuff out. Luigi moved from California to South Carolina to, to do work, work with, with you guys and lives with TJ, who's sitting in the room right now. Like like lives with TJ, like, it's like his best like good friend, like. Like they're like they hang <laughs> out all the time. Like honestly, and like, and like that will and when right. we and that platform will become a basically launching pad for whatever he wants to do, Luigi wants to do next, and and who will be affected by that? And like, dude, all this stuff tomorrow, like what we do tomorrow out in freaking Union Square is going to just connect so many dots for so many things that like ten years from now. You can look back on these little things like an Instagram story about a meetup for a freaking dinner that led to all these different things happening but like that night at dinner like you could have done a million things like you had no reason to come by there literally I actually like, don't usually go to I've never yeah. been to a networking event before yeah like and that. it wasn't even like and it was so informal it was like a little dinner like, with we were like, just like we were just people. like we just like had nothing going on and we happened to be in town we're like we're gonna eat dinner might as well like see if anybody wants to right. randomly like meet up and dude it's like you realize that these small little connections like these small little threads that all of a sudden, like when you like look from a, like a top down view, they're all freaking it's interwoven. It's bro. It's, it's weird, honestly, man. it's it's nuts. But that's how everything happens. Yeah. Like show face at that extra event. You know, get the fuck out of your house, meet people. That's yep. like literally all what it boils down to. Absolutely. And the law of attraction have play, has played out insane for me. Just Absolutely. everything I say in my songs ends up coming true. Like yeah, everything. Man. So, well, man, I appreciate you being on. This was an incredible conversation. I love these parallels between like business and right. art and relationships like it all it's such a common theme man it's so cool and i uh, appreciate the time i look forward to tomorrow it's going to be absolutely incredible I'm excited. so guys with that this is the bread winner podcast i am your host tyler harris and we'll see you next time